clean up later. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, we're going to continue. We're up just where we left off yesterday. The patch is off because we've cleared out some of the stuff. Today's plan is a bit of persuading first, a bit of noise just to start. You know the routine by now, those of you who have been before. A bit of persuading to clear around some of these areas, then the rest of the stream will be quiet, uh, smooth carving off. It might just be about enough work to finish up today. We've got 90 minutes or so. It might take me just about that time. It's a peaceful day here in Asaksa. It's Saturday morning. There's a gentle, gentle rain outside. I've got the door open. You can hear street sounds, but it's Saturday morning. There's not going to be too much noise out there. It might be quite a quiet day in the shop, too. I can't say. Last weekend was insane, but with the rain now, it'll quiet down a bit. Anyway, let's get to it. Oops. Let's get to it. Jesse, the short dude with the beard from last month. <laughs> that, that describes an awful lot of people that might come through here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How goes the war? Don't ask me. We just barely got a stream this morning. During the night last night, I sleep in the same room where those internet cables come through, you know. And during the, last, the night last night, I hear scratching and scratching and scratching. I get up, I throw my pillow over the corner where the cables come up through. The scratching goes away, away they go. Some hours later, I half wake up, scratching, scratching, scratching. I throw something else at him, and that's it. I get up this morning. Yeah, I've got a picture. Hang on a sec. I get up this morning. <laughs> now, we had two, two Ethernet cables that I ran down to the first floor here, one for the counter and stuff and the register, and then one for me to do these streams on. And last week, I told you a few days ago, the, uh, the rats here took one of them down. Last night, there's a view, they had to go at the second cable. And I think because I disturbed them when they were doing it, they ran away and they got through the cable sheath but didn't get into the wires inside. So we came within a fraction of a millimeter of losing all my internet here on the ground floor. And if they had gone, if I hadn't thrown that pillow or whatever. <laughs> so, so whatever, so it's the emergency situation now. None of the traps have sprung. We haven't caught a single one of these guys yet, and now they are actively every night trying to destroy my internet. So there's no way around it. Once the stream is finished today, we've got staff coming in, Koizumi-san and uh, Kawai-san are coming in today. I'll make a quick trip down to the home center to buy some, I've got to buy some conduit. I have no other choice right now. I can't get the rats out of there. I have to simply get some conduit, rip up the floor in the party room up there, put the cable into a conduit so the rats can't chew through it. Yeah, that's right. Right now the traps are baited with peanut butter. I should put cable in the traps. <laughs> Good idea. Hey, let me get some work done here. <laughs> put Ethernet cable in the traps. Why didn't I think of that? Okay, we're gonna make some dogs. I think with the new settings on the microphone, with the new uh, compression settings, it should be okay. I'll move the mic away in any case. The mic's now over there. Pack things in wire wool. Well, that was the idea. We were gonna put wire wool, steel wool, in the actual hole so they can't come up and down. But we were trying to not make it too difficult for them because if we really blocked them, then they're gonna start chewing, 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 just trying to find a way through, destroying more things. So that's why I wasn't actively fighting these guys over the past few months. They had their territory, we had ours. And if I felt that I made it too difficult for them, they would then start to destroy things. And what's happened now is even though I left them passage there, they had food, they still destroyed the cable. So I don't think packing wire wool in that gap is gonna make any difference. My number one job now is today, get to the home center, get some conduit, protect that cable, and then we'll move forward with the next step of the war. So my mother's there. Good morning, good morning. I've talked to you for a while. Okay, I gotta do some work here. I gotta do some work.
あ、あれすごい。そっか、そっか。Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at this. Sorry, guys. Okay, back she goes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay.
Okay, let's switch over. That's enough noise for a while. It's not all clear, but let's switch. I don't want to sit here making noise all morning. Let's switch some quiet tools. Enough noise for a while. <laughs> Buzzer under my bench, sorry about that, yeah, okay. Okay, you know the step, what's gonna happen here again? We've got new people every day so let's explain a little bit what's going on here. There's a wood block that's being cut. This is a block for making a wood block print. We're going to make pictures from these pieces of wood and to clear each block it's a three-stage process. The yellow area here is going to be retained wood. That'll be what prints the image. The area that doesn't have yellow on it is going to be cleared away. Step one which we did the other day is the knife is used to cut around the edge of the area. That defines our keep and our non-keep areas. Step one is the knife cutter. Step two, which normally would happen all over the entire block, is we remove most of the waste wood with chisels, hammer-driven chisels. That gets it all out of there in a quite uh, short amount of time. You can see that's happened here, and it's left a pretty rough surface. So anyway, step one, cutting with a knife. Step two, clearing the waste wood with chisels and gouges. Step three, which we're gonna do now, is to use these series of small bullnose chisels to clean up the bottom of the oceans. We want them to look like this, nice and smooth. This is still rough. And then after the bottom of the oceans is cleaned, we then have to get into this, the, the shorelines, where, where the you know, land meets the sea, and we clean up that part. So what are we doing now for the next half an hour, half hour or so is stage three of this process of making a wood block. We're gonna clean up the ocean floors, and then go around the shore.
All this will come out later. Just I didn't want to sit and bang too much this morning. All this wood, we're going to take the wood away. The, we've talked about this before. After the block is finished carving, we'll be putting color on here and printing it. And in order that the printed area doesn't make a mess somewhere outside, we clear to a distance of what we call UB Sambon. Jap three fingers. So later on, I'll be scribing, I'll be just with chisels, we'll be taking away the wood to somewhere around a line like this, three fingers away from the printed area. So later on, all this will come out with heavier chisels, leaving a nice printing area in the middle of the block. Okay, now that that's clean and clear in the middle, let's get this edge stuff taken away. This is the last step between that sharp knife cut and the scooped area. Clean away the middle. And the, these bullnose chisels, the Japanese word is aiski, and it means aida sku. Sku is scoop away, and aida means in between. So it's literally the chisel for taking away the in between wood left between those previous two jobs. What's this? Somebody's talking about when I first started streaming here. It was last August, August the 22nd, I think we started up last year. I was carving the octopus brain back at that time. Uh, I still have to admit, with some embarrassment, it's still the same job. I'm now on the fifth block out of eight, and it's been a year and a half. What normally should have been a couple of weeks' work, I'm still, over a year later, still working on it. Of course, I've got a pretty good excuse. Uh, whatever. I'm not just a carver anymore. I, I, I run this business. I manage this business. We've built a new shop. Lots of stuff has gone on. But here I am. Yes, I'm still on the same blocks that I was working on over a year ago. Getting close to now. Most of the big jobs are now gone. They're now behind us. I think that pair of uh, strong high heels goes by every day. I think.
What's this question? Just when you thought you were making progress on the octopus print, how's the 2018 gift print going? The 2018 gift print was the, was the owl last year. I think what you're talking about is the 2019 or 2018. How do we label them? I don't know. Okay, I get what you mean. Anyway. How's the next gift print coming? I have, I think, I have the design. And uh, I don't want to tease you, but I think I have the design. But I don't know, I'm going to work on it today. I have something now in my machine here. I scanned it last night. There was a guest here last night. Oh, Soka Soka, I should mention. There was a guest here. I was out for dinner last night with a guest, a visitor from know, Australia, who might be watching the stream here today. I don't know what his Twitch handle is, so I can't tell if he's on here. But let me drop a link in here. Uh, visiting for the past few days here in Tokyo has been a friend of mine, a friend, just meeting him for the first time, but a long time internet friend, Tom Christensen. He's an artist from Australia. An uh, easiest way, let me find a link here. Hang on a sec. To pop in. I should have prepared this. So hang on a sec. A little bit of Googling here. Here we go. Here we go. Here's a link to a, an art gallery that has Tom's work. And he's been here for the past few days, and he and, his, he and his partner came over last night. We went for dinner, chatted, 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 and I talked too much. I used too much of this one and not enough of these two, <laughs> like I always do. And if Tom's here this morning, thanks again for, for spending so much time last night. We had good fun chatting. <laughs> Could have gone off for a day or two longer or whatever. I forget what I was, was going to talk about. Anyway, after, after Tom left, you know, I, I got busy on that, uh, hunting up for some more of that image. And I think I found one. I think I have the image ready for this year's gift print. The successor to last year's wonderfully successful um, music, the owl print. And again, I, I don't want to tease. I did, it was not my intent to tease. I think I'll show you tomorrow. If it does work out today, I'm going to get to Photoshop today and try and work up a, a good layout for this thing. And if it does work well, then I'll show you on the stream tomorrow, and we will have the beginning of our next meme. But I don't want to show you yet because I'm not sure if it's going to work. So just just give me give me 24 more hours to work on it. But I think yes, I think we're there, and it is just whatever. But I, I shouldn't talk about it. It's just so such a beautiful image. I cannot wait to get going on it. The reason I'm hesitant to. to to show it now is because I'm not sure if I can get it down to a, a, a number of impressions. We can't do it, you know, a 12 color print. Oh, Tom is here. Good morning, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Tommy Cat. Okay. <laughs> it was great fun talking to Tom. I'm, uh, we, you know, it's one of those, you, you wish you could uh, spend more time together, but uh, other sides of the world and everything else. So, so. Tom's doing printmaking in a very different approach than I do. For me, it's, it's I was going to say only, it's not only. For me, they're decorative objects, they're pleasant objects, they're pretty objects, and for me, the making them is the main point. Tom has a bit of a different viewpoint. He's, you know, a contemporary artist, so he has a social viewpoint. So Tom makes prints that have... Uh, What's the easiest way to describe it? So social commentary, you know, he sees things that he thinks could be changed or should be changed in society and makes imagery to try and communicate that concept. Of course, printmakers all over the world have been doing that for many, 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 many years. Not so much in Japan. The Japanese print tradition was really never about social commentary. It wasn't permitted back in that era. It was social, I'm uh, just showing what society was, showing things in society rather than trying to comment about how they could be changed. The easy excuse for, for Japanese people why they didn't do social commentary is that it wasn't allowed. It was a repressive government and such things like that. But in, in the West, printmaking ex became expected to be a force for social change.
The bandsaw blade. We're getting a bandsaw blade that has, I don't know, what's the word? There's width and depth, is that the word? We're getting a bandsaw blade with a fairly substantial depth on it. Which, uh, out, as I understand, I don't have a whole lot of experience with bandsaws yet. I'm about to get a whole bunch of it next week. We uh, understand that the more depth there is to the blade, the easier it is to stay in a relatively straight line. So, yeah, we, we chatted with the, the company who we're buying it from about our needs and our requirements. And in fact, they, they seem to be on board with that because what they did was they recommended a different model to us than the one we had chosen from their, their offerings. We had looked through their catalog and thought we knew what one we wanted, but when we chatted with them about what we were going to do with it, they said, oh, that's perhaps not such a good idea. Think about this one. And actually, the one they were recommending was a cheaper one. It was less expensive, so we weren't being upsold. It seemed like actually, actually really good advice. And so we'll see. We're going to get some experience, and uh, we're going to start simple with some very small blocks, you know, maybe postcard-sized blocks. The blocks for the next year's gift are going to be the first ones we make on the, on the new setup. And we'll get our experience. We'll share it, we'll blog about it, we'll talk about what we're doing, but uh, we'll see. The one problem about with the bandsawing thing is uh, it's a question of where we're going to do it. I know we have two facilities here in our business. We have the SXA shop, which is mostly a shop with our printing room upstairs. But it's also where we've been uh, gluing together the wood blocks. But there's no room here for heavy machinery. Heavy machinery meaning things like that bandsaw stuff. So we're having that shipped to Ome. And the growing collection of old wood blocks that we will be processing is coming together in Ome. So doing these blocks is not something I can do like on a day-to-day -day basis fooling around with. Aoyama san and I, our help with Aoyama san and I. We'll be scheduling it. We'll be going out to Ome on any given day to work on those wood blocks a batch at a time. And then once they've been resawn, we will send the pieces, ship the pieces here to Asakusa, where we have our, our press to glue them together. So it's going to be bloody inconvenient going back and forth and doing all this, but we really have no choice. We can't use noisy machinery here in Asakusa, and anyway, there's no place. We have nowhere to put it. So it can't be helped. And I guess when we want to stream that, we'll have to arrange one day I'll be out there, I'll take the camera with me, and we'll do a stream about it from out in Omo. Times out of four four, John says, you know, we this was was is under consideration. I don't a lot of the buildings around here, what the, what the owners or tenants have done is they've added sort of prefabricated rooms up on top of the ceiling, up on top of the roof. It seems that City Hall doesn't, you know, investigate these things too, too much here in Tokyo. A lot of our neighbors have done this. There's, it's a flat roof on top, and what they've done is they've got a little prefab building, a storage building, or a little one room where somebody's living and stuff like this. They've done that up on top of their building. The reason we're gonna, not going to take that approach is, is twofold. One is we really don't want to get in trouble with City Hall. And second is we have a problem in that the owner of the building uh, to the west of us, the one that has the, uh, the oyster shack downstairs, his building is a bit taller than us. So he has one floor higher, which overlooks our roof. And that's where he and his wife live. So if we built a little thing up on top of our roof and put saws and machinery in there and started to do we are going to run into complaints right from the first minute when we start this. The guy lives there and if we start running machinery up there he's just going to go nuts. He was born in that building. He's an old time here. He belongs to this community far more than we do. We're the, we're the newbies here. 
So we're not going to explore that avenue just yet. We're going to put the bandsaw in Ome, where we can make all the noise we like. There's nobody anywhere near. I won't just take it like that. I know resawing those blocks is not going to be something we do every day, obviously. We'll do them in batches, a few months, wood at a time. No, ask the neighbor for help with this. I don't know. He's already uh, shown us what he thinks about that kind of stuff. I know a few months back, we had some young college kids over here. They were doing a little movie project for their college you know, classes, filming us and taking pictures and stuff like that. And one day when they were here, I was too busy to do the work they'd come. So they had to take a break for an hour or so till I was free. And it was a hot day, whatever. So I sent them upstairs onto the, the roof outside. They had their lunch with them. So I sent them up there. Here, go and have your lunch upstairs on the roof. It's fairly cool, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So this gang of about six or seven or eight college kids, really, really nice kids, went upstairs to the roof, had their lunch. Late that afternoon, the neighbor came over. He said, look, you know, I've been good with you. We're good neighbors and stuff. He said, I can't take any more of that shit. We're talking Japanese. He said, I can't handle that. There's so much noise up on your roof today. And like the kids were just sitting there. They were college kids. They weren't like playing volleyball or anything. They were just sitting there chatting and talking and doing this and that. And the guy just let it be known, look, I don't want you using that space. I don't want you making noise. I'm living there, blah, 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 blah. And he's one of the dons here. He's, you know, he's a big, big, big man in the local shrine and the festival. He's, like I said, he was born in that house. We have to go easy on this. And I didn't think I was making trouble there, but he has said, clearly to me that he thinks that was uh, excessive and not acceptable and blah, blah, blah. Whether you have a different idea or not, is it relevant? That's the way this community works, you know. So there's no way we can run power tools out there. It's just, just, just not possible. And if I were in his position, I would be thinking and acting the same way. These buildings are so close, so tight. What happens in one house is audible to the next house. You have to keep those things in mind when you're planning your activities. You can't just ignore it and say, what the hell, I'll do what I want in my own house. That's not how this society works. doesn't want to come out, it's stuck somewhere there. Right, where to next? I'm here, down here, let's get into this stuff here. What are we asking? Did Hoksai ask Carvers to deliberately tighten his lines? On a, in general, as a general rule, there's no communication between the designers and the craftsmen working, in general. The designers just hand in their stuff. They hand it in really too, also, in quite rough sketch form. We've talked about this before in one of the YouTube videos I made a while ago, talking about stage by stage by stage, how the pictures were developed from sketches to finished prints. So as a general rule, Hoksai would have nothing to do with communication with the carvers. 
There is a case in his life where we have a, a letter. We, I mean the researchers who collect this stuff. There's apparently some correspondence left between Hoxai and one of his publishers. And I forget, I can't quote it. You can, you, if you look it up, you'll find it. On a Hoxai letter asking Carver, whatever, Google, something like that. Where he is complaining to his publisher of a certain series of books that it was going well until you changed Carver's and now it's no good. I want you to go back to the Carver you had before because he really understood how I'm trying to do faces and stuff like that. So there is this leftover little history of, of a letter where Hoxai is trying to influence the publisher as far as the choice of Carver and what the Carver is doing. But in general, no, 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 no communication. The Carvers are carving much finer lines in general than the designers are designing. The designers are not drawing each one of the little hairlines one by one by one. The designer puts a wash there, carve hair. The carver carves the hair there. We're coming up to Cameron time, but it's Saturday today, so there won't be any visitors here. It's just me. And Cameron's off for the weekend. Frame drops. I'm showing nothing at this end. Still, am I banging the thing again? Kilobits per second, 3,455. CPU, 13%. No overheating. Drop frame, zero. I think we're okay at this end. What was that?
sorry to laugh, but I just the, the surreal aspect of this still that I that I can't avoid thinking about. You know, we're sitting here carving a wood block. You know, and people are watching and like saying good night to each other and like, what what is going on with the world? <laughs> I'm not laughing at it. I'm I'm, I'm I just I don't understand it all that well. That's okay. <laughs> Human beings are funny creatures. I don't think they're funny creatures. Yeah, I mean, nothing negative about what I said. I'm, I'm totally happy with this. Of course, community is community. I get what human beings are, and, you know, we join these things, and we make communities, and we lay, like being near each other and stuff like that. I get it. It's just, there's just a surreal aspect to this. I was going to say absurd, not absurd. There's a surreal aspect to this that I still, I, I, don't, I don't fully understand. <laughs> so <laughs> it just sounds so absurd. <laughs> Some guy in a room in Tokyo is sitting carving a representation of an octopus doing something and there's people watching it and there's a community and can I jack see you tomorrow and it's just something is absurd. <laughs> if you'd sort of whatever sort of described this to me back in, you know, whatever, 1990 or something before this internet thing started, you know, I would have just, you know, all of us, we would have just said, what, what, what are you thinking about? What bizarre story have you concocted? You know? So I get it. I'm laughing. I'm happy. I'm happy. But uh, <laughs> it just still seems absurd sometimes. Uh... I blow hot and cold on this myself. You know, whether the internet and smartphones, whether it's the end of human civilization or whether it's the door to something we don't even understand just yet. You know, a wonderful future. I don't know. <laughs> I blow hot and cold, you know. I see people walking down the street. We've mentioned this before. It happens to me every day, any number of times. I stand outside the shop, 
I see people walking down the street. They'll be in a group, two or three or four people together. And out of the two or three or four people, you know, one or two or three of them have their smartphone out and looking at it and with their thumb flicking up. And they're walking down the street in Tokyo and stuff is, you know, surrounding them. And they, all they see is the Facebook feed. And well, somebody's got the Google map out there. They're, they're doing directions. I get it. This is, there's a real function there that's happening. But other people are just on their smartphones as they are walking down the street in this glorious city that they've flown all the way around the world to come and visit. And that's the part of it that I don't get. Uh, I'm not trying to be the grumpy old man. Just, just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Real experience and virtual experience and the blend of these two that's changing into something that, that you know, none of us really understand anymore. You know? Someone's asking me about listening to music and stuff. I don't. I, don't, I didn't quite catch the question. I Before we opened this shop, when I was working by myself back in Ome, uh, listening to music was it just it was an absolute part of my life every day, all the time. I didn't just bang on the radio like I don't. I don't know, what can I say? My neighbors, for example, I hear them get up in the morning, the alarm rings, people get up and click a few minutes later, the TV goes on, and the TV's there until they shut down at night. You know? Maybe that was a way to describe my music use. I don't think so. The house would be quiet. I get up, have my breakfast, nothing going on, no TV, no music, no nothing. And get down to the workshop, I'd get down there, whatever, some days 8 o'clock, some days 9 o'clock, some days 10 o'clock, whatever, no schedule. And I'd sit at my bench doing the kind of stuff you see me now. I'd work for a while first till I get settled in and warmed up, and then reach over to, I mean, before the internet days, I had cable music piped into my workroom in Ome. I paid a monthly subscription to a cable company which had music channels and hundreds and hundreds, literally hundreds, like eight, 800 or 900 music channels. And then I had my own CD collection, a record collection, whatever you want to call it, the CDs, records and tapes, which I had all, I had all imported into my, uh, into my computer system. And the music was a constant, constant causing presence in my, in my workrooms. I had good big speakers, a nice big bass woofer, and I listened to music and or the BBC radio once the internet connection came through and I had access to that. So my personal uh, taste was to, yes, to enjoy listening to stuff while I was working because it doesn't, doesn't interfere with the work. This was while I was a solo craftsman. Move ahead now to Asakusa. And I suppose at the moment I could be doing that now because there's nobody in the shop. I could be playing music in the background. But, uh, I just haven't set up that kind of capability here. You can't, you know, my workbench now is an accessory to our shop. It's not my private workroom anymore. But yeah, I have no trouble at all with distraction. The, the, the work I do, like the work I'm doing right now, it's mindless work. You know, you can, now after you, what's the word, what's the proper word? It's not intellectual work. I, my brain can think about other stuff while I'm doing it. 
I have to do the work carefully, but it's mostly manual work, so I'm totally free. That's why we can do these streams, of course. So yeah, long story short, short story long, whatever. I used to listen to music and or podcasts and or radio. I think every time I answer this question, I then segue into the same answer. A lot of the traditional printers here, a lot of them, have a TV set over their bench. Komatsu-san, when I first met him at the Yoshida studio, he was a printer working on the ground floor in the Yoshida studio. And I'd be there in the morning before he was there, because I was a hot little guy, get ready to go, and I'd see him come in at whatever time it was, 9 o'clock. He'd come in, hang up his jacket, click, on goes the TV, which was positioned in front of him above his paper supply stack. And the TV was on all day long until he went home. And it's usually melodrama type programs, you know, TV, drama, soap operas, whatever, this and that. And the volume is low, not to bother anybody else in the building. He could hear it just in front of his face there. Nobody outside was bothered. And he watched TV all day while printing. Which I thought was kind of a, how do you do that? But uh, he managed it just fine. But for me, no thanks. No. I'm sort of doing that now, aren't I? I've got this distraction going on over my shoulder here, which I keep looking at. No, what kind of music? I can't answer. It's decades and decades and decades ago. My, my tastes in music are all, uh, all over the map. All over the map.
Okay, that's all the area I persuaded, isn't it? So, uh, so what time is it? We've got time to do a bit more. 902. Okay, so let's zoom out. I've got to persuade a little bit more. No Nat King Cole fans out there. Yes, I have everything you ever recorded. Everything. Okay, let's zoom out. A bit more persuading. I didn't quite do enough to carry me through the day here. Two more ears around the outside of the creature here at the top and around the creature at the bottom here. So a bit of noise here, sorry about this. What was that? No idea. Okay, some light tapping here, no big deal. Let's move the mic away. As we said earlier, this will come out to a length of three fingers when I've got time to whap in, whap away with no worry about making noise.
This wood is a very flat grain that splits no matter which way you go. Wood that is a strongly angled grain will slice one way easily and split the other way. This one splits both ways. persuading for today. Let's not clean off these two zones. I'm missing a bunch of questions here. I'm sorry. Questions, questions, questions. I can work or I can talk. I can't really do both at the same time. Where are we? Where are we? If it's been since several years since printing, do you have a list of exact measurements? No, 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 no. And we don't keep any records at all of what we make as far as color mixing. Uh, that's one of our skills, is we can look at a print that we've made or anybody else has made. We can look at the color and we mix and match and mix and match to find it. It's like a guy in a paint shop. You bring him in a paint swatch. You want to match your paint on the walls. The guy in the paint shop says, okay, start with white, pushes it, pushes it, pushes it, away he goes. That's our job. So we don't keep records of colors at all. We just make them up each time. Business about keeping color samples and, and, and uh, our records, you know, 10 grams of this, 2.65 grams of blue, and make your color, you know. That's the way I assumed it worked. And, and when I came here first to do that, I was, I was sort of thinking in that direction myself. Then I had an experience one day with one of the uh, printers. I was visiting Matt Zaksan, who's actually not the best skilled printer in town, but whatever. He was way above my level. And uh, I had been having trouble with getting my colors right. And it's way back at the beginning of the Poet series and I met this guy. So I, I called him up one day if I could come over and, and ask, I said I was struggling about mixing the colors, you know. So he says, yeah, come on over. I brought my block over and I brought a sample print. And I forgot to bring my little formula about X percent of red or X percent of blue, which I thought was critical information. He just laughed. You know, he looked at the sample print, sat down with his pigments, splash this, splash that, splash this, take a test print, whoops, no, splash a bit more blue in, take another test, whoops, splash a bit more blue, there we have it. And within seconds of sitting down with something, a particular block, he had matched the color exactly. I mean, exactly, as far as we could possibly tell how close it could be. That's their skill, our, our skill, the printer's skill. It's our job to create the colors in these prints from a few base colors. We don't buy greens, we don't buy purples, we don't buy browns, we just have a couple of reds, cool and warm, a couple of blues, cool and warm, one yellow, throw some black in it, and we're good to go. And I showed part of this in one of the recent YouTube videos, recent meaning a few months back, I showed Kubota-san, one of our, our printers, doing the color testing work on the parody of Metal Gear Solid that we did, we call Serpent Strikes. And if you watch that video, you'll see it. He's got a white tile at the side of his desk. He's got little jars with the base pigments in them. As I said, a couple of reds, a couple of blues, and yellow. And you watch the video, and he just looks at the color sample from Jed's original color uh, print. And the guy just mixes it. Bang. Add a bit of this, add a bit of this, add a bit of this, add a bit of this. Bang. There's your color print. Go. Next. 
So there's no formula, there's no calculations, there's no 7.65 grams, there's nothing. You just look at the one you want, and away you go. Oh, move the mic back. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's the mic, height coming back. There's the mic coming back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, cooking. I think it's, I, I can't say for sure, but I think it's like cooking. You can do the ratios with cooking and the grams and the measurements, and for industrial cooking, that makes a lot of sense. But for one person cooking in their kitchen, making something, and who's got experience with it, I think you can feel how that thing works. You feel how your bread dough needs a bit more flour, a bit more water, because you can feel, you know what it's supposed to feel like and taste like and touch like, you know. And for someone who doesn't know what they're doing, I guess, yeah, whatever, start with the formula, and, and until you build your own experience, you don't know. So I'm not being anti-science, and I'm not trying to be something uh, spiritual. You really have to have the touch of Jedi to do this, you know, whatever. And of course not. But simply after you've done it enough times, you start to learn what it looks and feels like, you know. So I, I'm not trying to, to play fancy and, and, and I'm the master and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. Just the normal way of doing this in our, in our tradition here, in the way we do this, is just simply, it's the printer's job to look at that thing and say, okay, I can see this in there, I can see that, and it's going to need to splash that. Oops, no, a bit more of a splash of this, and away you go. It's how I sound coming out. So it's that time. Is it getting closer? 9.16 it says. So the stream now, coming up the next few days. Today is Saturday morning. The current plan is I will be here tomorrow morning, Sunday. Uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be working on this same block, but we'll be working on the next stage of it. Meaning we're going to start doing the color dots. Because this block, well, we'll explain it tomorrow. This block is not for a solid color. There is a solid color on the octopus, and that's a separate block. This is the block that will create texture on the octopus. You see black dots here, that's from the key block. Those black dots are part of the image. But here and there scattered across the octopus are dot, dot, dots, similar dots that have textured color for the octopus skin. And that's what this block is intended to become. We're doing a two-stage carving on it. Step one was just to get the area of octopus body outlined first then I'll wash this off and I will paste on tracings that I've made with my iPad from the original print, from the original design. You can look at a bit of it here. 
the original design has many, many dots in the octopus tone itself. And I can't transfer those onto this block from the key block because they're not there. So I separately have already traced these. You saw this happening on my iPad some weeks ago. And tomorrow when I finish clearing all this and we have a flat body of block for the octopus, I will wash it off and paste on the tracings that carry these dots. That will probably happen tomorrow morning, Sunday morning here in Tokyo. Having said that, we have an emergency situation here with our ethernet. The rats tried to go through my main ethernet cable last night. They took off the she thing. I showed you the picture. They didn't bite morning. They didn't bite any of the inner wires. They may come back tomorrow night. They will come back tomorrow night. So sometime during the day today, I have to get something worked out to sheath that cable to stop them from chewing it. If I succeed, there will be a stream tomorrow. If I don't succeed, if I don't get that cable protected and armored and anchored in place, I may wake up tomorrow morning and find they've gone around it and all my cabling is down and there may not be a stream tomorrow. If there is, I'll post something on the Twitch page to let you know what's going on. And just right now, to let you know what's happening, there is a potential disruption happening. We are at war. The enemy is stronger than I am. <laughs> there's a lot more of them, I think. I'm bigger, but there's a lot more of them. So we'll see. We'll see. And we're going to have to step it up. At the moment, the only thing we've tried against the rats, as I said, for years we've been trying a territorial separation. That's no longer working. They're invading our territory. Good morning, Kozumi-san. So step one, we've tried rat traps. They've been out for three or four days. Of course, they haven't worked. I knew they weren't going to work, whatever. So we're now going to have to explore lots more. Today, cable armoring and rat repellent or machine guns or flamethrowers, I have no idea where it's going to go. We'll let you know. Somebody's new. What did I just come into? <laughs> Welcome to our stream. Okay, I'm done. I'm out of here. we got a shop to run today. There's three print parties. I'm going to help these guys. Here we are with Mr. Octopus. Tiny bit more clearing still to go. I've explained what's happening here many, many times today. I can't explain it all over again for somebody new who's just come. I'm out of here. Time for me to get back to real work today. Thanks for watching again. Stream tomorrow if we can get a truce going with those animals. <laughs> what a situation to be in. Okay, guys. See you later. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching again. And Tom, thanks for dropping in and thanks for the visit last night. I had a blast. I talked too much. Didn't listen enough. But anyway, nice to have met you. See if we can spend some more time together. Signing off. Thank you, guys.